Hello everyone, welcome back. So I get a lot of comments on my channel about how to become a better builder. And as you can see, through the, throughout this Minecraft world, we have lots and lots of different build styles that we've experimented with. And uh, I wanted to make a video today talking about how to achieve some better building in Minecraft. So we're gonna go over to a creative world today, which is my test world. And I'm gonna explain some different principles and things that I use when building in Minecraft to hopefully help you become a better builder. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, first things first, before we head over to the creative world, I wanted to talk about one of the biggest things when building in Minecraft, which is that Minecraft is very similar uh, when you're building in this style, which is very large, uh, to artwork. So I use a lot of art principles because of that. So for example, right here, uh, one of the biggest things I wanna go over is perspective. So when making a build, the first thing I always think about are the sight lines and the perspective. Where am I gonna be seeing the build from? So on this build, I knew that I would be entering through this straight uh, line right here. So I built everything centered around this straight line point. The same goes for this castle as well. I've chosen to put the roofs in the locations that they're in because I knew that most of the time we would be standing down here. And so we're gonna be seeing it from the bottom. So what's the best way to make it look grand? Well, fill in roofs in a lot of these open spaces and uh, hope that it looks good. <laughs> So that's kind of my basic advice on perspective. It's very important to think about where you're seeing your builds from and where the most traveled paths are. I think another great example of this is the river we built. So if we head over here to the river, this was actually, um, when I built this in the episode, I designed it like this on purpose because I knew that I would be crossing this bridge quite a bit and be looking down over this way. And so we put that tree right in the center of that sight line because I knew that that was gonna be open had that tree not been there. So a lot of this is all basic art principles that you would learn in your beginning art classes and stuff like that. And so that's how I usually start off a build is I think about what is the main perspective of where I'm going to be seeing them from. So let's hop into the test world and let's find a open plot to help you get better at actually building. So once you have your perspective figured out, you then want to go into your color palette. All right, so here are our basic colors of the rainbow. So usually when I'm building, it's very good to think about what sub colors we have attached to these main, uh, what would this be, nine? It looks like there's nine of them. This main nine that we have right here. So you can see with the way that they've um, designed the blocks in Minecraft, the terracotta is actually a little bit lighter of a shade than the concrete blocks here. So you can kind of see where this is going. Um, I love to look through the menu that we have and just see what kind of different shades and colors we have using um, the concrete as our base because those are pretty much the brightest colored blocks. So this goes for any menu on any item here. So for example, just for the sake of the video, you can see this mangrove wood is kind of a darker red. So it would be a nice little transition block from the concrete into the terracotta. So this is how I usually think about colors and color selection. But what this can also be used for is shading as well and shadows. So say you have a wall like this, say, say we wanted to make like an overhang or something, um, we would make our roof like this and then we can take the red terracotta and do something like that because it's a lighter shade. So uh, you can use all these blocks in different creative ways to help you get different texture on the wall, which is gonna be our next thing, texture. So I love working with gray to explain texturing because there's lots of different gray blocks in Minecraft. So if we go ahead and make a wall here, so you'll see we end up with something like that. So this is obviously very uniform. So in order to texture this the right way, what I like to do is pick a certain point on the wall and we're gonna extend all of the blocks upwards one. So you just pick a point and you take whatever block outlines that one. So this would be the outline to that. The polished andesite would outline the cobblestone. The stone brick would outline 
the uh, polished andesite there. And then lastly, we would have the stone up at the top. And so then it kind of creates like a shift in the wall. And so you would do this a few more times. You can always mess around with how you like to um, create the uh, gradient is what it would technically be called. And so we'll just move this one up quite a bit like this. So it's a little bit higher on the wall. And you can see by the end of it, we have a very, very nice pattern like this this so so this is a cool way to get some texturing on a wall and very important to notice how i did this as well which is i use the lighter blocks at the top and we go from lighter to darker at the bottom so um, very important when you're making a gradient you want to have the roughest and darkest texture at the bottom and then you want to move upwards to something that's similar but a little bit lighter then smoother and so on and so forth until you reach the top. So uh, to be honest with you, the, these two could probably uh, be swapped a little bit, maybe something more like that. It's up to your imagination to figure it out, but gradients are very important when making a build to really help you get that um, real life feel out of something. So next I'm gonna use some very, very basic blocks and we're gonna be talking about shape. So. Uh, one of the main reasons that amateur builders have a hard time building in Minecraft is because they build with very basic shapes. All right, so let's just say this is our amateur house. They would probably put a door there and like a window here or something like that. Very boring, right? This is very, very, very basic. So we need to transform this and make it look a lot better by experimenting with shapes. So the first things first is um, always laying out some sort of basic foundation to get yourself to see the different shapes because it's hard to see shapes from nothing. So you want to just kind of place some different squares here and there to see how it looks and see if that's something that you like to continue on. So uh, usually making some sort of extension off of the side could probably be interesting and having a roof go upwards like this right here so that way you would be able to let's get some stairs here so i can show you um we'll use some cobbled deep slate why not um and so if you have the stairs go up like this you can see this no longer is a box and is now a um triangular thing where then we could continue the actual roof for the other uh, box right here. So already just by adding a roof and a little side extension, this build has been improved greatly. All right. So now that we have a different roof, a very important that you don't really want to do what I did here, which is where you have these two roofs line up at the same point. Ideally, you'd want them to be at different heights of elevation. Um, but since this build is so small, it's a little bit difficult to achieve that. But We'll build off of this and continue. So uh, another thing is we can put in our um, ideas that we talked about, which is using different block types for texture. So we want to get rid of the same different um, or the same blocks that we had with the oak wood there, because that is all uh, very repetitive and the eyes kind of get lost in the build when they look at that. So now we have some different blocks. We can even use some stripped oak logs in there kind of put them at different heights so that they're all not blending in. So we'll just do something like a little L shape down there. So now the build has some different uh, shading to it, but we still need even more shapes. So my eyes are kind of seeing some sort of other extension off to the side here. So let's build something like that. We'll just build it flat for now because we don't need to be building in 3D. So. So when you build a house that's symmetrical, it has to be really, really detailed in the walls or else it looks extremely repetitive. Whereas if you're able to build it offsetting like we did here, it won't be as repetitive and it's a little bit easier on the eyes because there's many different things to focus on. So now we have some sort of shape like that. So this is exactly what I was talking about where now you can see, well, this whole empty piece right here looks very dull there's not really anything sitting in there so now what i would do is i would go in there and i would go ahead and add another piece right there to fill in that space so i would do something like this and we kind of can just build this wall up maybe one higher so that it kind of stands out a little bit more like that 
and then we'd have a roof at this point as well so all right so there's our roof and so now we've got a, a cool little shape there and so that's how to build off of the shape. So let's apply more of our principles. One of my favorites to transform a build is using foliage and natural, um, just natural items that you would find in a world like rocks and leaves and stuff like that and adding that along the bottom. So one of my favorite ways to emulate rocks in Minecraft is by using slabs and stairs because they're not um, cubes and so uh, it's a very good way to get some different shapes. So I usually just like to go in with the stairs and kind of just place them at random orientations and whatnot. Important as well to add some foliage. So we'll go in there with these azalea leaves and just kind of plop them randomly here and there to uh, get some different foliage placed on the outside. So now we have something like that. So you can see that cube has been totally transformed now. So another way of adding detail is using stairs and glass panes along flat faces so by a flat face i mean you can see we have this five block long wall and it's just flat we don't have any indentation so usually what you can do so you can break out a space for the window and use some upside down stairs at the top like this and then a bottom facing one and you can see it creates an indentation where now we can place windows so I like to do this on pretty much all of the flat faces that I work with. Now the glass in Minecraft is all up to your preference. I tend to like black, white, or gray. I feel like those are the best looking glass panes. You can use the regular one if you want, but I just find that it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb a little bit. So I tend to use the different colors because they hide a little bit better and uh, I feel like it just looks nicer. So I'm gonna go with the black stained glass for today's build like that. Now you can see this build, it's still missing something. So what else would I add to it? Well, first things first, I love to add little flower pots sitting underneath these open spaces here. It's very easy to do. All you're gonna do is grab some trap doors. So we'll grab some spruce trap doors and a grass block and just go ahead and place the grass block underneath the window like that and just line it with trap doors. And then go ahead and place a flower of your liking on there and you can see that now we have a nice little flower pot underneath the window to add some depth there's still many more things to come so as i talked about with texturing trap doors like we just used are also another great way to add texture so these days we have the luxury of all these different trap door variants and one of my favorites to use for an oak build palette like we have here is the oak trap door so i like to go ahead and right where the windows are just place two trap doors and line them up against the wall and you can see it's going to add some depth to the wall and they kind of look like window shutters now we did use that uh trick in the one episode where i had the window shutters with uh, signs on them so let's remake something like that here so just place the uh, trap doors facing each other like that and then go ahead on one side of them and just place two signs like that and you kind of get this open uh, window shutter like that right there so that's a cool way to make some window shutters and it looks very cool from down here so you can already see this build is completely transformed now from what we originally had so the final thing I would do is add in some details and that's just little stuff like a chimney and just some more tiny things to make it stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to add a chimney in here. So my favorite way to do this is kind of picking a spot on the roof. Maybe let's go right here in the middle of these two. And I usually start with full blocks and then I'll go to stairs like this. So we'll go up one more and then I'll take a stair and I'll kind of like loop the stair around a little bit so that it kind of does like a bit of a uh, circle, if you will. Not like that, more like that right there. And then a wall like so. And we can place our campfire on top. Hopefully it's not too tall compared to the rest of the house. Eh, it's fine. <laughs> so uh, it's a little crazy looking, but I usually like to do that with my fantasy builds because it adds uh, a little bit more of a design. So you can see this build has been totally transformed now compared to what we originally had so the final touch i would add is probably some leaves along the roof this is just a great way to uh, add some more color to your build and kind of just make things look a little bit more interesting and not so uniform so i usually just kind of 
drape them down like this and especially off of the sides it's really uh, great practice to have them hang off the sides like this and so this one would probably had we completed it fully it would be like that so now you can see we completely transformed that square building into a lovely little house just by using all of those little tricks that I just used so um, yeah, I think that's going to be it for today's video. I just wanted to make uh, some quick examples and showcase um, that building isn't as hard as you may think it is. It's actually quite easy if you use those tricks every time. So that is a little bit of insight into my secrets. I use that in pretty much everything I build. It's all kind of the same method, just repeated over and over and over again. So hopefully that helped you guys out and you guys will become better builders by uh, using those tips and tricks that I just shared with you. They are very, very helpful and stuff that I have accumulated over the years. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.